everyone. Welcome. It is Desiree and we are in our third series of the 2023 Christmas series that I do. And again, we're shaking things up just a little bit. Um, so if you're just coming into this one, this series, there are two prior. Uh, the first one was ornaments and tags, what we how we can use our stash. The second one was all about poinsettias and the different ways that we can put those together whether we use the stencil with ink or die cutting and then stepping up the die cuts, all that fun goodness. This series here is all about pattern paper. And for those of you that have been here for a while, I know you have been going through withdrawal for my Simplicity series. Well, this is going to kick this off. It is going to come back definitely in 2024. I love pattern paper. Um, I hoard it. And what's great with pattern paper is it can do the work for us. We don't, and I know this sounds funny coming from me, but we don't need all of the fancy things. If we just have a simple paper pad Today I'm going to be using a 6x6 six six paper pad. I'm going to be pulling in just a couple sheets of some accent colors that go along with this. We can make beautiful, beautiful cards because we're letting the pattern paper do the work. And all you need is a sentiment stamp set or sometimes the paper pads themselves come with cutter parts. This one here that I'll be using is by Not Too Shabby. Uh, Jamie has a great uh, monthly subscription where you get two paper pads each month at a great price. So I'll make sure I'll link down her shop below and also to her subscriptions if you wanted to check those out. But her paper pads are six, this one's six by six, and you get 24 double-sided designs, and you get four of each design. So this one here is called Tropical Christmas. I just thought it was really cute. So you have this little tiny bag with a sled, and it's all pastel colors. May not be your colors, um, but again, we always don't have to do traditional. We can step out of our box and use other colors. We have a geometric grid. We have some small skates here, candy canes and other candies, flamingos, some Christmas tree lights, a great background, bigger images, smaller of the, um, of the flamingos, a dotted pattern. They like to do, or she also pulls in like glitter papers, which are not glitter. They just have the look of glitter, which I think is fantastic some presents, and those are the designs that we will be working with. I've got my card bases ready, and from one paper pad, you can get very many cards. I'm just going to show a few. Now again, we let the paper do the work for us, whether that's creating our mats, creating our different levels, and that's what I'm going to be doing with us now. I need to make this statement. As always, video is long, could be Gabby, because I'm probably, I may um, talk through a lot of this as we go, and some areas will be sped up. But I don't measure when it comes to this. I just cut the paper down to size of what I'm looking for. It drives everyone, or a select few, crazy. I understand if you're looking for those measurements, but you can take this technique and make it your own by using specific measurements to get the same look. I just don't. I just sit here and cut my papers and have fun with the pattern paper, with what I'm looking at. When I do something like this, I break the paper pad down and we'll be walking through that together. I always know my first cut. That's the cut that I always do because I'll be using standard A2 size card bases 
and I know that my first mat, whether it's the solid cardstock or whether it's the pattern paper, is going to be cut four by five and a quarter. So take a note, four and five and a quarter. That is always the first cut. Since this paper pad is also white, has a white base theme to it, I'm going to use the card base itself for the first mat to get that frame going around it. So whether my next layer is the solid or the pattern paper, that next cut is going to be four by five and a quarter. And then we're going to look at everything else. All right, so grab your favorite paper pad. Let's dig into that stash. Remember, that's what this series is really focusing on, digging into your stash and using the techniques that I'm using throughout all of these videos to create your holiday cards. Now, I say holiday cards. It doesn't mean that these techniques cannot be put into masculine cards, birthday cards, baby cards, celebration cards, or just a card to give to somebody to put a smile on their face. I think snail mail does that the best. Okay, so let me move these out of the way or just put them off to the side. So let's look at our paper pad. When we look at our designs, the first thing that I do is look for that smaller image, that image that's going to be the background. I really like this one to be that background. This would make a great background as well. And again, you can use any of the pattern papers as your backgrounds. This may be a good background, but I'll show you how we use that. Definitely using that one. I think that one is absolutely adorable. We're getting into larger images here, but this is a great background, this one as well. And now we're getting back into the same images, those duplicates. And already we've got six pattern papers for them. So these get piled up and are going to go here because I know that these are going to, or in my brain, that these are going to get cut either to four and five and a quarter or three and three quarters by five because then I'll have a solid cardstock come in at the four and the five and a quarter. And, and you'll see that as we go. So when we look at that, bringing that up, this one I'm going to keep by itself. I'm going to use the card base as the first mat and this one as well for, and also that one. For these, I'm going to use the solid cardstock. So these I know are going to be cut to three and three quarters by five, and these are four by five and a quarter. So I set these aside. Now what I'm going to do is look at those patterns that we did not choose, and that is these here that I'm pulling out. And just looking at those, so these are the next round. So this is the next six. These, I want these to be cut up and have a mat that can be either placed on top of our backgrounds or create different elements. All right, so these are gonna be piled this way. And I do this every time I break down a pattern paper pack. So now I'm going to look at these and I'm looking for these middle, the middle size or the smaller size elements. And I'm liking those. And I think I'm also going to throw this one in there. And I always have the paper facing up so that I can see it. And now I'm looking for one more. And here it is. 
And now these are going to go together as well. These are my extra sheets. These are the ones that we can play with. So these are going to get set aside and pulled in as I need to fill. What I'm going to do now, and that's when I'm going to switch over here, speed this up. I'm now going to cut down the pattern paper and have some fun. Okay, so now you've kind of, I've gotten you into my head on how I look at a paper pad and why I break down what I'm looking to break down. So let's start cutting up and putting our designs together.
Okay. So here's what we have cut so far. It looks like a hot mess and we have no idea of what's going to come of it. But in a way we do. So here, what I start doing now is taking the ones that I know that are the bases. So this is a base, this is a card base or card mat, card design base, let's call it. And then I know that these are card base designs. And then I know this is a card base design, just has to be trimmed up even more. So right here we have seven, seven designs going on. Believe it or not, this is going to go on a card base. This one is going to go onto a card base. And as I'm running out of room, this is going to be a design card base. So here are 10 right here. And that's the number that I'm going to make for this video. Now you can certainly continue by breaking down the pad. And as I, once we get to the end, I'm going to show you what I have left and what I do keep. Now I know that's going to be controversial, but how I'll, I'll get through, just be kind. Okay. So what I have left now, knowing that these are the design bases, I have these six here to add elements on top of. So we can look and say, okay, I really like that one there. We have this one and I really like that one there because we have the soft blue coming around it. This one will be really fun on top of this one. We're going to put a stripe off to the side on that one. We have this, the flamingos will look really cute on top of the dots. And then I have these, this is gonna go here. Now, did I have all of this in my mind? No. I just cut these pieces to say, okay, this is what I'm looking for when it comes to the designs. So now what I want to do is start getting the cards together. And we just, I just lay them up in front of me and sometimes I'll turn them to the side so that I know, okay, this one's a card and this one's a card. Um, so that I don't mess the layouts up. Now, if I do, okay, it's not a big deal. We just have fun with the process, always enjoying the process and having fun. All right, I'm gonna grab my glue. Let's see here, and I'm going to use this one. This is a, uh, it's a PVA craft glue. It's really good. It's archival. So I've started using this just a little bit, and plus I found it. Okay. Now, let me grab, I love these. That fits perfectly in there. So now we're going to grab the card bases and what you're going to watch now, I'm going to speed this up. You're going to watch me put the cards together. Again, I'm coming in every once in a while, just explaining what I'm doing, what's going on through my head, because when it comes to any of my simplicity videos, I am turning my camera on and I am just filming. I don't know what my cards are going to look like. I have not planned them out. I very rarely plan a card. I just look at something and say, oh, I like that. Let's see what I can make with that. And I bring you along for the journey. Again, let's dig into your stash and have fun just cutting up that pattern paper. All right, so let's get these cards together.
Okay, got through our cards. This is what I have left. So let's talk about that first. So if you remember from the solid card stock, I pulled out two light blue and two of this deep pink, magenta, whatever you want to call it, deep pink. Let's go with that. I did pull in a third because there was something that I wanted to do. So you can, you know, by all means, you can do that. This here is what I have left of the blue and the pink from the original sheets. And then I also, let me throw these, got to grab those in. Um, and then I have these scraps here. So that's what I have left. When it comes to the pattern paper, I have seven full sheets left. I do have this piece that I matted. I have these strips from when we first started cutting. And I have these strips from when we cut. And then I have these smaller pieces here and then these itty bitty pieces. So what do I keep? When it comes to a paper pad, I store, when I have a pad that's like this, when I've cracked into it and I've had a ball tearing it up and cutting her up, I use uh, plastic pockets. They're six and a quarter by six and a quarter. I get them from Amazon, great price. Um, and I will put my scraps in here. So I will save these scraps. I will save these scraps. And I will save these strips. I do like to weave pattern paper. And I will save this piece as well because it's matted. So those are the pieces that I will keep. They stay nice in here and then I put them back in my crate. These pieces I will not keep. Now you certainly can, by all means, if you want, you can keep these. I will not. And I don't keep these pieces either. All right. They, yes, they get, they go in, in, dare I say, the trash. Yes, I know. You can use those strips though to make a tag, whatever, whatever you want to do. You can certainly do that. Okay. I do not. I will keep these strips. These are great for backgrounds for sentiments. I will keep these. These are great small pieces for die cutting because I do love to die cut and sometimes they can get into really small pieces. This one as well. This one I will cut down into a card base, four and a quarter by five and a half. Same with this one. I will cut it down and whatever's left, I will put in my smaller pot. Um, and that's how I control my scraps. I keep scraps, but within a certain limit. Um, like for solid cardstock, if this goes under two inch square, it will get tossed. I know, I know someone's going to holler at me. I get it. Um, but that's just how I handle my scraps. That does not mean you have to handle yours. And I keep them in plastic containers, um, when it comes to those, to those scraps. Okay. Um, so that is storage, a little bit of storage and how I keep everything together. So let's talk about the cards that we did make and we had one extra card. So not only did we make 10, we came out with 11. Yes. So let's just go through them. So here we just have our simple mats. You know, we have our pattern paper, we have our mat pulling that out. And then we have this pattern paper, which is kind of busy, but by putting a mat behind it, whether it's white, whatever color you want to use, it's going to segregate the patterns so that you will see each pattern paper on your card. That is the wonderful thing about matting. You can put any paper together and as long as you have that mat in between, it will be seen. 
Now also, what is great when it comes to a pattern paper pad? And I get this question a lot. How do you know what papers are gonna go with what? The paper pad has done that thought process for you. And what I mean by that is, it doesn't matter what two pieces of paper you choose from this paper pad, they are going to coordinate. Paper pads are designed that way. It's a limited color palette, and the color palette runs throughout the entire paper pad. It doesn't mean that every sheet is going to have every color of the palette, but they have been put together to coordinate. So if you take a light blue with a tan, it's going to coordinate. If you take the blue with the pink, it's going to coordinate. So the thought process of what's going to go with what has been done for you, which is awesome. See, that's what's great with a paper pad. You can add your coordinating colors from your solid cardstock. All right, I chose a deeper pink than what's in here, and I chose a light blue that's close to this paper pad. And those differences in the colors are going to be able to segregate your pattern papers. So mats, I love mats. Now the other question I get a lot, and I, you know, people always say, you should have cut out the center. You can do that. Yes, you can take a mat and to save your cardstock, you can cut out the center of it and then you'd have this piece to use for another project. That does work. But when you put multiple mats on top of each other, your paper will sag in the center, okay? Unless you're putting a piece of scrap paper underneath it. So if you've got a lot of scraps, you know, like this, and they're the same weight of paper, you could build that center up if you choose. But when you keep having mats cutting out that center, you get this valley that the sides are up higher and it starts concaving and your card will start to warp and go out of shape and it won't stay flat like this is. Okay, so that's why when it comes to, especially with solid cardstock and I mat, I do not cut out the center, all right, when it comes to this. Usually, I will cut out the center when it comes to my specialty cardstocks, mirrors, uh, glitters, um, the textured, but again, I'm looking at what's going on on top of it. I don't want it to sag, especially with glitter paper and some of the mirror cardstocks. They are really thick. They are a very heavyweight cardstock and it will cause it to sink down. So I'm selective when I do that and when I don't do that. So I get that question a lot. Well, how come you didn't do this? You could, you could hoard more of this. And you're absolutely correct. And I do in some occasions. When I'm using solid cardstock as a mat, I do not because I'm, I'm putting multiple layers on it and I want it to keep its flat shape. Okay. So you can see very clearly defined. For our next one, we can go in different ways. I don't have a solid cardstock mat here because I'm allowing the card base to do that for me. And I just created a mat here for this border. You can see the different sizes in the pattern. Still clearly visible here, still clearly visible here. And you can do whatever you else you want to the front of this. So we have a horizontal design going across. Creating multiple bands, by doing this and creating the two different bands, you're kind of saving your paper as well because you're cutting it down and it's sitting underneath this wider band. So it's a way to stretch your solid cardstock and the pattern paper if this is a pad that is truly precious to you because we all have some of those pads. Oh yes. 
and we all have our favorite companies. I did add some double-sided foam squares, again, because I've got that valley in the center. I don't want this to concave down, so that's why I did not put this directly through here. But again, if you have scraps, could have used some of these, you can certainly, and you would have to use two of these because I've got two layers here to build that center up. All right, but again, you can find that way to stretch. And each pattern paper is visible. You're not losing anything. You can see this one, this one, this one, and this one. Here, just basic, larger center. No mat for this because I'm letting the white do the work for that. It's a it's a glittery glittery look in the background, and I'm just loving that flamingo skating. Just saying. Did the same thing with this. No mat. Let the white do it. But then I took this piece and I shifted it down, and I didn't want as wide of a mat, so I put it on there, having a pair of long shears is for me a staple in any paper crafters stash all right because you can get one fail swoop cut and it's straight unless you wiggle off to the right or wiggle off to the left all right you can stabilize the scissors along that pattern paper once you start the cut so I'm stabilizing that along the paper and I'm just going straight up to get that straight edge down the paper. All right, so long shears, vital. I am a fan of the Tim Holtz Tonic and I am also a fan of the Tonic Studios. They are great blades. Once you use them for paper, you don't use them for anything else. No threads, no fabric, paper only. But then I also took this mat and pushed it down to the corner. If you want to center it, you can. All right, I like to do things wonky. I'm a wonky person, okay? So you can place that wherever you would want it. And this nice cloud effect is just subtle in the background. For here, we took our borders and our panels and our mats and shifted them all the way over to the left. They are going from edge to edge, and then we just have this piece of paper coming out. It's just a difference in look. We've got a white mat going on here from the base of the card. We can cut our papers on an angle. So by using the background and then taking another piece the same size, remember this is four by five and a quarter. It's the only measurement that I truly know right off the bat. And then just cutting this on an angle. You could make it lower, you could make it higher. And by doing this, you could take this piece and use it on another card. So you've got a two for one when we do a cut like that. Here, kind of the same premise. We are using the card base as the mat and then just taking this from edge to edge. If you don't want this to go from edge to edge, you could cut your mat down first to the same size as this pattern paper and then place your piece on top of that. So again, a different look, making it look like the pattern is moving. Here, we've got that double mat again, a little bit larger. We've got our white mat, our solid cardstock, another fine print in the background with another mat, and then the larger print in the center. When you're doing something like this, you do want your larger print to be the last, to be the one that's on top, because then you'll see it. If we do it first, you kind of lose the effect of that pattern paper. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't do that because you'll get some effect of the pattern along the edge, if it's a stripe or a polka dot, whatever that may be. Um, so you can choose which one you want to sit where. For this one, cutting your squares, these are two inch squares. I had a thicker mat going on there. Didn't want it that big. So I just have them going on in a diagonal across the card. And then 
different layers going on here. We have a long one here, used up one of the squares, and then have a short one coming off there. So you can create a design with your mats and your pattern paper when it comes to the front of your card. So these are all the cards that we made, and I'm sure I'm going to get a qu the question of, well, where is your sentiment? Whenever I do this, and I do do this often, because these are the cards that sit in my stash. I do not put a sentiment on them. Mainly because these are the cards that I use for that occasion, which always happens. It just pops up on me. And why? Because I have a husband. And I have a husband who waits until the last minute to say, Oh, hon, I have this event. Do you have a card? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I do donate all of my cards. The majority of the cards that I make, some of them do go up onto my, uh, my website, my shop. Um, but the majority of them I donate um, to my local um, senior, senior, uh, senior center. Um, and they just love them. But these I keep on hand. I can add any sentiment I want to these cards. If I want to make it a Christmas card, it's ready for Christmas. If I want to make this a birthday card because somebody's birthday or event is in during the holidays, I can do that. Just because it's Christmas paper can, does not mean that you cannot use it for birthdays and other celebrations that fall within that time frame. Now, I would not use this paper well, this paper, I would actually, with the flamingos, I would use this in July or May or June for a birthday um, because it's got a flamingo on it and it's cute. If this had Christmas bells and Christmas trees, no, that would be for the months of November and December. But again, I keep them without a sentiment just for that reason so that the only thing I need to do for my husband his heart is to add that sentiment for him and he has a homemade card that he can use for any type of event okay so video one of series three it's all about simplicity that's what series three is all about so that's how we have kicked it off and you can see 11 cards and this is the paper that i have left I could technically, I'm sure, get another 10 cards at minimum from this paper pad, depending upon how I want to break it down. All right. So we've started this off. Stay tuned for video number two. We're going to do something else in the simplicity world and just focusing in on pattern paper. If I, again, I will link down to Not Too Shabby. Um, to this shop. It's a wonderful shop. Jamie does a great job and her team um, is top notch. They do a great job for her as well. And I will also link to her subscription page. She's got some great subscriptions uh, going on for her products, um, especially to the paper pad, if you're interested um, to review that. But again, I am encouraging you dig into your stash. Use what you have. I understand hoarding pattern paper. I do. I very much do. But just remember this. There's always another paper pad to replace it. Yes! <laughs> it took me a while to realize that. <laughs> and you will love that paper pad just as much as you loved that other one. Absolutely. Um, once I realized that, it got dangerous, guys. So do not do what I do. Dig into your stash and have fun with it. If you have any questions, make sure you leave those down below. And I will make sure I get back to you as soon as I can. If you haven't yet, don't forget to subscribe. Hit the thumbs up. And make sure you hit that bell to make sure you're notified when the next video is live. As always, I hope you are enjoying this series so far. I know I am. I'm kind of enjoying this the way that I've set this up, I think it's a lot of fun for me and I hope it's a lot of fun for you. But remember, enjoy the process. 
Have fun creating your art. It's what it is. This is a piece of art, guys. It truly is. And know that you are making it. But again, remember what is truly most important for me. Always be creative, guys. And I will see you in simplicity video number two. Till then, take care.